Good afternoon, dear colleagues. Thank you for the presentation. I'm very thankful to the organizers for the opportunity to participate in, uh, in the White Night Conference. Now it's uh, held in a new format, but it opens up a new opportunity for us as well. My uh, presentation will be devoted to endogenic therapy in the second line. It will overlap uh, the previous presentation, but I'll skip some slides. As the professor said, uh, evolution has happened in the therapeutic regimen. We have had a great number of cytostatic and targeted uh, drugs. Uh, uh, we have a great number of targeted drugs comparing to cytostatics. The maximum uh, win, uh, uh, at maximum, those will win who received the maximum treatment. The most effective uh, line of therapy is the first line. The second line of therapy, luckily, the majority of patients receive, and the choice will depend on the similar factors, the similar uh, questions uh, we will be facing. Uh, the progression-free survival response to the previous therapy, mutational status, localization of the tumor, resectable or non unresectable tumor despite the second line of the therapy, and of course uh, the uh, PS score uh, and uh, the expectations from treatment. I'd like to give you the clinical uh, case, male, 72 years of age, without uh, severe comorbidities. The only thing is uh, that uh, the patient has a uh, chronic kidney, kidney failure of the second degree. Since September 2015, the patient uh, had constipation, scholar, colonoscopy uh, was performed, a uh, lesion in the sigma, adenocarcinoma of the colon uh, with extensive necrosis, and then resection of the sigma was done. Then the patient was later examined according to CT lesions in the liver were detected. Uh, the lesions are detected in the one lobe. The question was about uh, whether or not it's possible to do uh, cytoreduction. reduction. The patient, uh, the uh, the uh, P8 uh, 3K and BRAF mutation was detected. Uh, we thought about debulking, BRAS uh, uh, expression was positive, and uh, we uh, started to think about chemotherapy. It's a combination of chemotherapy together with the antigenic factor. What to choose, full FOX or full theory? We know that uh, these uh, two regimens, uh, they, are, uh, they are equally effective. Full FOX uh, is equal to full theory, and full theory is uses and options for the potentially resectable tumors. Dear listeners, please vote. What sh will you start with? With the surgical treatment, with the full fox, full theory, full theory nox, or chemotherapy plus anti uh, angiogenic factor? The module for voting is under the player. It's a male, 72 years of age. The primary tumor was removed. There are two lesions, large lesions, in one uh, uh, lobe of the liver. And as the majority agreed, we started with chemotherapy for Fyrio Nox. We conducted four cycles of chemotherapy. The fact was stabilization, and later the patient uh, uh, had a left-sided hemihepatectomy performed. Uh, the histology metastasis of a colorectal adenocarcinoma with a 50% of necrosis. Uh, there was the question of whether or not to add anti-angiogenic therapy. It was at the beginning of 2016. We didn't have the, the, the opportunity to do this, and we started only chemotherapy. Then we uh, asked the question whether or not to continue adjuvant therapy. Uh, if to think about adjuvant ther hemotherapy, uh, we would have chosen uh, the full fox 
but uh, the patient had post-operative complications and uh, to resolve these post-complicated post-operative changes six months needed. The patient was followed up during six months. In six months, the disease progressed. Uh, parietal cancerematosis and singular, singular liver metastasis. Fulfiria nox, if there is KRAS and NRAS mutation, we choose Irina Tecan plus anti-antiogenic therapy. And we had Aplivirzeb, Bevacizumab, and Ramicizumab. Different trials say that the patients who didn't receive any first line of chemotherapy anti-angiogenic medication and those who receive angiogenic uh, medications, uh, they can uh, survive longer if anti-angiogenic therapy is continued. The Lure trial showed this, uh, the overall survival of patients with the first line bevacizumab and without bevacizumab in the first line. And also there will be advantage in the progression-free survival rates. It's interesting that we know that anti-NGVR uh, anti therapy will give additional advantage. When we add anti-endogenic medications, uh, we uh, can increase ORR. Velour showed that aflibertsep together with fulfurias at the second line increase overall survival statistically significant. It's important that anti-antiogenic medications, they are bo they equally effective in both right and left sided tumors. Patient had surgical treatment, anatomical resection as four of the liver, and the second line of therapy, we started full theory of Libertsept, nine cycles, and the patient had the full response and full regress. These cancer hematosis lesions, uh, they disappeared. Then patient uh, was under surveillance. The surveillance happened during six months. Later, the patient had uh, progression. What would you choose now as an option uh, for a patient who received uh, the second line of chemotherapy full theory plus ultraviolet six month uh, dynamic follow up and now we have the relapse of the disease. It may be full fox plus continuation of anti VFGF. Fulfiri plus anti VEGF, symptomatic therapy because it's a th third course or only a dynamic follow up because uh, there are no extensive clinical symptoms. 60% uh, decided on Fulfiri plus continuation of anti VEGF, and we see that. The patients, regardless of what they received in the first line uh, EVGF or VGF inhibitors that they received in the first line, uh, their uh, continuation of the anti endogenic therapy will increase survival. Patients with bevacizumab in the first line, when they continue anti VGF, VGF medications in the second line. We see that this positive effect, here we can see at the end uh, the tail on the curve that says uh, that there is an additional advantage in more than 20 percent of patients if we continue the therapy with anti-BEGF. Unfortunately, the patient after the th 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 three cycles of Fulfiri Plus Alfibertsep, he progressed again, parietal cancer hematosis, ME shifted to Folfox plus Bevacizumab, nine cycles with stabilization. Then we started maintenance therapy, Capicitabine plus Bevacizumab. It's a third line with anti-VGF therapy. The therapy started since December 29. 18 up to November 2018, but unfortunately, 
during later progression, lung metastasis were detected. Different regimens of chemotherapy were suggested. Regorathinib, uh, then uh, we decided to return to Folfox, uh, please, Bevacizumab. The duration of the metastatic colorectal cancer uh, with the different variants of chemotherapy, it's a duration and anti-VGF therapy during the, uh, it was 48 months. And we mentioned that, we said, that when we had only chemotherapy, it was only 10 months. Then we had uh, target therapy 20 months. And in this situation, we are talking about 48 months. Of course, uh, expression of new antigens appeared uh, that resulted in the resistance of bevacizumab. I'm not going to talk about uh, in detail anti-angiogenic medications. They are approved to treat metastatic uh, colorectal cancer, uh, such as bevacizumab, aplibizumab. Uh, these medications are registered. Uh, for the choice of therapy, we take into account uh, the localization of the human molecular biological profiling. Or we have new biomarkers uh, appear. We use uh, the fluid biopsy for monitoring. The choice of therapy is very important. It's a typing of tumor for four groups. We used to talk about Keras, Sendras, BRAF, but now we have a multigenetic approach. We study the clones, the stroma, the immune character properties of the tumor. You can see the algorithm that is available on ESMA. If for the first time for BRAF and RASMUT, uh, we use uh, full theory plus bevacizumab. In this case, we lose uh, the option for the second progression.